Hi guys, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. This one is based on a mini challenge that Moira O'Reilly issued over at our Facebook group, and it was to use watercolor and stamps on your background. I'm going to start this layout by actually editing my photo, and I'm doing this because you guys had requested that I show a little bit more of how I use Snapseed. And so I'm just, uh, in the Snapseed app, I increased my ambience and I increased the highlights, and then I'm just adding some glamour glow, but that really makes her skin look quite orange. So I'm going to decrease the saturation and then I'm turning it to black and white. And I like the bright setting for black and white. It just kind of blows out her face and makes her look very kind of dreamy looking. I'm going to save that and then I'm going into my tangent app and I'm I'm just picking from all the styles that are along the bottom. I'm picking the one that has a circle pattern on it, but it's actually a discontinued circle pattern. See how it doesn't go all the way? And that's because there's actually a mask on it. So I just re reversed it so that you can see less of the mask because I wanted to, uh, instead of having a circular mask in on that uh, overlay, I wanted it to be a square so that I could line it up exactly with where the line of the shadow is on this photo because and when I composed this photo it had a major flaw which was this big distracting diagonal line across it which was from the shadow and so um, I decided to instead of trying to recapture that moment and take another photo my daughter was getting kind of annoyed with me taking photos so I thought I'll just work with what I have and the tangent app is really great for compensating for poorly composed photos so then you just saw me go back into Snapseed and add a little label with some text and I do have a, a video all about Snapseed on my channel, so I will link to that in the information section. So here I am taking some gesso on a piece of white cardstock, and I'm just moving this gesso around trying to trying to spread a really thin layer. I'm doing this with a credit card for two reasons. First of all, it, it spreads a really thin layer that dries a lot faster and I just want to get out my scrapbooking. Um, and secondly, it leaves lots of little lines that you're going to see when I add my watercolor paint a little bit later. You'll get to see how that really increases the texture on this on this page. I'm using the untextured side of this American Crafts uh, cardstock, I, meaning I'm using the flat side of it. So there's there's two sides. One has a canvasy type of a texture to it, and then the other side is more flat. And I'm using the flat side because I want to do some stamping on this, and uh, I do want some texture, and that's what I'll, I'll get from the gesso. But I didn't want too 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 much texture. So I just took my heat gun and I blasted it with some heat to try to dry it a little bit. And now what you're seeing here is actually a completely different piece of cardstock because I lost the footage of this so I just re-recorded it. So I have my sunburst uh, stencil. This is, I believe it's a crafter's workshop stencil. It's very well used as you can see. And I just used my Faber-Castell pit pen to outline around the uh, shape of the sunbursts. And then I have my Koi watercolor set and I just ran upstairs to get a bottle of water. I'm paranoid I didn't turn off my camera because I'm paranoid that I'm going to not record this either. So <clears throat> I'm going to do this super fast because it is the second time that I've done it. I've already completed my entire layout at this point. So I'm trying to just recreate the background. And so I'm starting with this pinkish red color and just adding some water to it and applying it onto my gessoed cardstock. And you'll see how the paint, it, watercolor doesn't really stick to gesso. It just kind of uh, moves around on top of it. <clears throat> pardon me, which is really nice because it, it's very forgiving. I'm going to show you something here. See that? You can actually completely erase it just with a piece of paper towel. Ideally, I ran out of paper towel, so I just did it with a tissue. Uh, but you can completely erase it and it, it actually goes right back to white. And so that's actually quite nice for uh, if you change your mind. When I originally made this, I actually got the blue, and, or sorry, I got the green and the yellow out of order. And so it went red red, orange, green, yellow. And so I just wiped it off and did it over again. And it looks, it, you can't even tell. So uh, as you see right there, I went out quite a bit outside of the lines and I'm painting this very, very messy. And I'm trying to concentrate the color into the center of, 
of the sunburst. Now I am uh, I'm just mixing a couple of colors here to get a different shade of blue than than what I had. <clears throat> Pardon me. So first I'm putting this deeper blue on and then I'm going to add in a little bit of purple just to make it more of a navy blue type of a color. And now this one will be purple. I made purple be the smallest ray because I don't want to emphasize the purple. And then I went back and I didn't do a great job of this because I was doing it super fast, but on the original layout, I just went back and I added a little bit more color in the center just to keep it concentrated there so that it, it kind of gradually fades out from dark to light. And I did a better job than I did on this example here. Uh, but you can see that even if you're messier than you should be, you can just go back with your little tissue and wipe it right off and start over again and that's the really nice thing about using watercolor on gesso so this is my resulting actual uh, page and you'll see that it is quite a bit neater I did it slower and I was more careful to stay inside of the lines but I didn't stay inside perfectly then the other thing that you missed was I just dripped little bits of the paint around each of the rays so that it's not perfectly colored in. And then you'll notice that I had these little pools. What I'm doing right now is I'm just making my outlining around this. I'm making it quite a bit messier by going over it several times. And I'm going to take my white gel pen and go around it as well. Although this adds very, very little. I just like the, the detail that it adds. Every here and there you can see it. And I had these little pools of dark color that you saw me just pick up with a piece of paper towel. And that leaves a nice white exposed, not entirely white, but it leaves these nice little reverse puddles of uh, place. I guess places where you picked up the extra ink and or watercolor paint and it leaves a nice little white circle left behind in the ray. So this is my background paper. I'm just going to blast it again with my heat gun. I have a new heat gun. It's actually not new, it's second hand, but I, I bought some of my friend's old scrapbooking supplies. She's getting out of scrapbooking. And so um, I have a new black one. My other one was was blue and I've switched it out and I'll probably sell or get rid of my my blue one if I like the black one better. It's a Stampin' Up. Look at how beautiful that looks. Now see that line that runs right across the, the yellow and you'll see lines here? Those are from using the credit card on the gesso. And so that's that beautiful, interesting texture that you get in the background when you use a credit card with gesso. I just love the look of it. Look at those streaks that you see. It's so beautiful. I love watercolor on gesso. It's so pretty. You really can't go wrong. You just smear it on, even if you don't do something as structured as this, just smear it on and, and let it dry and it will look really, really beautiful. So this is, I think I mentioned that this is for the watercolor and stamped background challenge over on my Facebook group. So we have a 27 day challenge every month, but in between uh, the days of the month, uh, oftentimes Moira will, uh, will challenge us to a little something every here and there and this is one of those so I have um, she challenged us to use watercolor and either stamps or rub-ons on your background and the overall challenge for this month was to make your own background I have a piece of stampin not stampin up scraptastic uh, black and white striped paper I thought about using that black with the triangles on it as another layer and I just decided not to it was gonna be a little bit too much uh, then I thought about adding a doily and again I think that's gonna be a little bit too much I really like the look of the the angles of this photo the reason I chose this particular design for the background is that this photo has this strong diagonal line in it and so uh, and with that black with the black of her outfit and contrasted with the lightness all around the photo I just really wanted to emphasize that so I'm um, I'm choosing some embellishments that are just going to act accentuate this image and as opposed to um, really compete with it. So I picked out that Heidi Swap uh, sequined arrow and then that uh, really shabby gray flower. I can't remember who made it. Oh, it's it's Pink Paisley. 
And now I want a single title to be the, a single word to be the main title for this. And I'm just looking at all of the words that I have. I thought about lucky, but I decided to put today as my title. And the word today is actually on the photo. It says first acro class today. And so um, I'm just going to put that on a piece of wax paper and play around a little bit with placement. I like it here, except that then you have first acro class today, today. So I'm actually not going to put it here. I really wanted a third layer here. So I had this from my texture class. I was showing how beautiful vellum looks when you run it through an embossing folder. That's a Maggie Holmes doily embossing folder. And so I thought I would just cut that down and use it as a bit of a mat for my photo. And it's not quite big enough, but that's okay because I'm just going to have that mat on three sides of the photo and not the bottom side. So I'm just taking my regular adhesive and I'm going to stick it on like that so that it's uh, matting on three sides, not on the bottom. And now I'm going to take that diagonal stripe paper that is from the Scraptastic Kit Club and I'm going to uh, apply that to the photo. And I just grabbed a quick shot and I'll show you that in a few minutes just because I thought that the background looked so pretty. When I placed the photo, I placed it so that the circle, the circular um, tag that said that with the title on it that says first acro class today I'm placing it so that that is in the center or approximately in the center of where my starburst is or my sunburst uh, because I want to emphasize the circular nature and the fact that those dots are kind of radiating out from the center and I want those dots on the photo to be radiating out from the same center that these rays are radiating out from I don't want any competing uh, background shapes that your mind is going to pick up like the kind of just those subtle details if it's off a little bit it'll look just a little bit off in the design so I just wanted to make sure that it was lined up properly now the second part of this challenge that Mo gave us was to stamp on your background as well and you guys know I have a lot of stamps and I rarely ever use them so I'm trying to use my stamps today. I took out two Scraptastic Kit Club stamps from before. This one that I'm opening up right now is from the February This Life Noted kit from 2016 and I'm taking it out for the tiny little plus. And then I have this other set from November of 2014 from the Scraptastic uh, scrapbooking kit <laughs> called Shake It Off. That was the November 2014 kit. And that gives me two different sized pluses and I just put them on the same block so I can alternate. And now I'm just thinking about, um, I'm going to do some tone on tone stamping. So I want green stamps on my green ray and turquoise stamps on my turquoise ray and so on and so on. So I'm looking for preferably the same company. I, I'm kind of thinking I'd like to use all the same ink, but just different colors. If I have to, I'll use different different companies. Um, so at first I, I thought about some Stampin' Up because I do have an extensive collection of Stampin' Up inks and then um, I couldn't find the right green so I thought maybe I'll use that Mama Elephant green and now I'm realizing that really my Distress inks are going to fit this purpose the best because I'm going to have almost all of the colors in a Distress ink. So I'm just using my little uh, swatch book there to help me pick which colors I'm going to need and I will tell you the colors as I use them. Um, I'm just kind of trying to decide here whether I'm going to go with orange or red for this one. It's sort of a reddish orange. And um, then finally, I didn't have a Distress ink that was the right shade of, of yellow. I wanted it to be a very yellow yellow, not too orangey. So I am using a Prima Chalk ink. So this first color I'm using is Faded Jeans. And I'm just spreading some of both sizes of those plus signs around the ray. And so that was, and now this next one is Mermaid Lagoon. And again, I'm starting with the larger pluses because they take up more space. So it's, I have to be more thoughtful, I guess, in how I place them. And I'm just having them be concentrated towards the inside of the rays and uh, less, uh, I guess, more spread out around the edges of the rays, like towards the outside. This color is called Lucky Clover. 
and it coordinates nicely with that kind of grassy green. This one is citra is a twisted citron. And um, I'm trying to make my inks be the kind of equivalent to the darkest color of the watercolor so that the, it's really blending in and then uh, you see lots of interest as I go up the ray where the watercolor is lighter uh, you get more contrast with those inks. So that is the uh, Prima ink it's called Colt's Foot I think and now this last this distress ink is called um, layered or carved pumpkin not layered pumpkin <laughs> carved pumpkin and then this one is abandoned coral and then the last one the purple one is wilted violet and so uh, I really like how these look the little pluses my first impulse was that I was going to put a combination of pluses and then there are also some open hearts and some solid hearts on that uh, this life noted kit uh, stamp set uh, but once I had the pluses all on there I thought that uh, it would kind of detract from it so that's what it looked like before I um, added those pluses and now this is what it looks like now so I love how messy it looks and I love the tone on tone look of those pluses stamped on top of the watercolor ink the watercolor paint I guess it is technically so now I'm just thinking about embellishments and what I'd like to do is just scatter some embellishments along the rays that are on the background and kind of concentrate it so that just like the both the watercolor paint and the stamping so that it is concentrated towards the center of the layout and then it gets more sparse towards the edges the outside edges of the layout so I have these these are from freckled fawn those cute little emoji uh, rubber pieces and they came in a kit over the summer and I really love them so I thought that this was a great opportunity to use them I would have loved to have had one for each of the rays but I just don't have enough of them in the right colors and so I am mixing in some random puffy stickers from various sticker sets over the years a lot of these are Amy Tangerine uh, puffy stickers I'm also I also have that pink fresh life noted uh, set of rubber stickers out as well and they are going to look really nice on these rays as well so I'm just picking some orange ones to go on the orange ray some yellow ones to go on the yellow ray and um, I just kind of looking and trying to balance them off right now I have one sticker on each of the rays and now I'm going to add a these rubber emojis all over the place I hope that I move my layout down or zoom out so that you can see a little bit better and uh, that turquoise color is a tricky one to match and so I'm, I'm just kind of trying to think about am I going to use dark green am I going to use a turquoisey color and I went with a rubber piece on that one so now uh, they all have at least one sticker on them and some of them have two now I grabbed the Saturday puffy stickers from dear Lizzie and they provide some nice oranges that I didn't have in my stash already and also the navy blue on those it could go either way like it, they the navy blue looks nice on the blue ray but it also is going to end up looking very nice on the purple ray as well and there are some interesting shapes on there as well I'll zoom out in a few minutes and you'll be able to see it sorry about that but see how the navy blue one also looks very nice on the purple right and so I'm just trying to balance them off I think my goal was to have three puffy stickers on each ray except the purple one the purple one's really tiny so it's okay if it doesn't have have three it'll still look balanced so yes I end up with three on each of the rays except for the purple one has two and again it's tiny so that's all right oh I really like how that looks everything's all kind of scattered and I just decided to add some sequins so this is my little recently uh, beefed up sequin stash I keep them in the little uh, packets that they come in 
and uh, I, I've bought them on eBay from, from China, and they came a long ways, and I had to wait a long, a long time, but they were very inexpensive to buy them that way, and the shipping was free, so I waited a long time, but it was worth it. So I have a little assortment of different colored sequins, and it came in quite handy um, because it, I was able to pick out colors that coordinated with, with each of the colors of these bands of color. So I'm trying to mix it up so that some of the sequins are large and some of the sequins are small, but I'm, I'm keeping it so that they're pretty much the same sequins on each ray of color. So what I mean by that is a single kind of sequins on each ray, but from ray to ray, I want the sequins to be different sizes. And that's sort of out of necessity because I don't have every color in the single size. But, and so once I had one that was different, I had to have several that were different in order for it to not stand out as looking strange. So that's why I'm using an assortment of different sizes here. And I'm just trying to make it as random as I can given the sequins that I have. So there we go. And I literally just sprinkled them on. And now I'm going to take my Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive and just go in with little dabs of glue and apply each of the sequins pretty much where they landed. Every once in a while, I'll move it over a little bit uh, just to make sure that they're not clumped up too much. But for the most part, I'm going to glue them down exactly as they landed including when they land on top of other things. I like that look. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue them on. Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Adhesive is my favorite glue for gluing one thing, like to, for gluing non-paper items onto a paper. And it tends to hold really, really well. And you only need to use a tiny little bit of it. So it's not going to seep out or anything if you use it in, in moderation. Now, when I come to this emoji, it's they've got this really weird um, glue. It's it's like a permanently liquid adhesive sticky stuff. Um, I don't know what's up with what with the glue behind those emojis, but it it's like a clear shiny glue, and it wasn't drying at all. And it was just the glue that they were stuck on the uh, backing with. And so I'm not entirely sure what the deal was with that, but I just put, ignored it and put some Tombow Mono Multi adhesive along with that glue in the hopes that at least the Tombow would, would dry. And I guess I could have wiped it off, but I just, I just left it. I might regret that. I'll see when I go to, I'll, I'll take a closer look at it when I go to put it in my, see, it just like they, they weren't sticking at all. So they, they just came up really easily. I'll check and see if they're, uh, if they're stable before I put it in my page protector at the end of the month, which is very soon. Uh, yeah, so when they land outside of the rays, I'm just um, putting them outside of the rays. And every once in a while, one of the sequins landed on the wrong ray. So like the, I think one of, the, one of the green sequins landed in the turquoise ray and I just went with it and because that just makes it look more natural and um, random. So there we go. So yes, what, what was I going to say about this photo? So this was a photo of my daughter. She wanted to take acro and she really is in a lot of different activities and we were kind of trying to decide whether we were going to put her in yet another activity because I do not believe in over over committing kids um, and I think it's really important that she has lots of unstructured free time in her life as well as all the activities the challenge is of course the new norm is that everybody's in all kinds of activities so it's hard for her when she sees her friends in all these different activities and us saying no that's too many so um so we decided to allow her to take acro and she was really, really happy. She wants to take acro to supplement her gymnastics trainings and acro is just a, an acrobatic type of dance. And um, so here I'm thinking about where I'm going to put my journaling. I don't really have much to say about it other than that Olivia wanted to take acro 
And so I'm thinking about, am I going to write my journaling along one of the rays or am I going to write it on the uh, photo itself? And I didn't want to put it on one of the rays because it would be just too hard to write around all of the little sprinkles of things that are <laughs> extending outside of the rays. So I decided to write on my on my photo and it didn't turn out terribly nice. Um, just I think it was because I had used that pen for uh, some mixed media earlier on in this layout like I used it to outline on the gesso and I think it just wasn't flowing very well so it it's not my neatest printing at all but once I underlined it I, I kind of double and triple underlined it just to make it look like it kind of like it's messy on purpose and it says Liv decided to try acro at East Coast Dance Academy September slash 16 then I added three little hearts just to fill up the space so here's what the layout looks like this was so much fun and I really love how it turned out and now I have another one of these sunburst backgrounds to play with because I made one for you guys today so that you could see uh, how I made it since I, of course, didn't film the painting of this one. So that means that maybe I'll do another sunburst based layout in the next little while. So as I mentioned, this layout was inspired by Moira's challenge, which was to use watercolor and stamps on your background. And I really enjoyed that. I don't think I would have added the stamps if it wasn't for the challenge. So thank you for that, Mo. Um, the second inspiration for this layout was some discussion that was happening on our Facebook group. I'll leave the link in the information section for this video to our Facebook group if you'd like to join us there. Um, but somebody was looking for a layout that was like this, where the embellishments were clustered by color. Um, instead of repeating color from cluster to cluster, it, it, they were looking for a layout and there was one in mind and different people were chiming in and trying to help her find it. And I'm not sure if it was one of my layouts. I, I have a feeling it was not because I really looked carefully through mine. Um, but anyhow, that sort of got me thinking that I love doing that and, and I should do it. So um, that's where this one came from. It was inspired by that and the, just the idea of clustering your embellishments by color. And so thanks so much for watching. I hope that you find some inspiration in this to get yourself scrapping and uh, the, join us. The information, sec the information about my Facebook group is right here. Um, I hope you join us and have a really great scrappy week.